Hello, this is Matt. Welcome to another Animating Mathematically. I find this demonstration on Wolfram Demonstrations Project, which uh, shows a series of points which are in a sequence, and the idea is that each point moves towards the next one in the sequence at a certain speed. And uh, if I play out the animation, then you'll see that they all end up converging towards the center of mass in the center. And uh, they do it for different polygons here. And I thought uh, we could try and experiment with that and see if we can uh, get something interesting. So, new Mathematica notebook here. Um, so, I think we want to start by generating some random points, P. Uh, make them between minus 1 and 1, and we'll have n of them, uh, and they're two-dimensional. So n, set it to 10 for now. Uh, P, okay, and then let's draw them. Uh, so we we'll have a table, i running all the way up to n, a disk centered at that point uh, with radius. Uh, 0 0.05, say. Uh, so that gives us a bunch of points. Uh, we can set the plot range so that we always get a square. And uh, it might be good to, uh, to colour these. So we'll say the colour equals uh, color data. Let's use the dark rainbow uh, scheme, color scheme, and have uh, 10 or n random uh, values drawn from that function. So we'll have colors there, colors. So now these should all be interesting colors. Cool. But we want to, this is just obviously the start, we want to say uh, the first one gets attracted to the second one, the second to the third, and so on, and then loop it back so the tenth one is again attracted to the first. And I think that we'll use uh, ndsolve to, uh, to solve the motion of each point. So, uh, one way to do this is to have a two for each um, for each point we'll have two uh, functions x and y. So if we do x of i t and y of i t, we want to think what are the differential equations for those. So x of i. Uh, the der derivative of that will will have equations for the derivatives of these. Now that will be. It needs to go towards the next one, x i plus one t. So this direction. And similarly for y. I suppose. So th so that. If you thought of these as vectors, that's uh, x i plus one vector minus uh, x i vector. Uh, the other thing, though, is that we need to um, divide by the uh, the norm so that we always get the no and the norm of those two vectors of the difference of those two vectors so that. Uh, the speed is constant. So that is square root of um, this squared. Well, maybe we can do it like this. So with uh, the norm equal to this squared plus this squared. Uh, get the brackets right. And square root of that. And we have these equations. 
So that over n, comma, this over n. Move these in. Uh, get rid of that, I think. Okay, that's good. So this is correct. Now the only other thing is that n, the norm, that could get very close to zero. And that will make it unstable when we're solving it. So I like this function here, I think, x of, uh, or no, log of 1 plus x of x. What does this look like? Uh, plotting it between minus 10 and 10. Yeah, it looks like what I'm wanting. So this is tends to y equals x when you go positive, but then smoothly, uh, smoothly uh, goes to zero and always remains positive because uh, it's log of one plus something positive. So it's it's an, a smooth approximation to max of zero x. Uh, if I get rid of the axes, you can see that. Okay, so we'll use that to make sure the norm is always uh, positive. And yeah, let's just check. Cool. Right, so instead of n equals that, we'll have n equals elbow of that. So th those are the uh, differential parts, but we also want the initial conditions. x of i of not equals p i1. So it's the initial condition. Uh, y of i not. Okay, so we'll have to flatten that so it's a list of equations. The next argument to ND solve is the uh, list of uh, functions that we're solving for. So that is the x of i and y of i. Again, it should be a flattened list. And then the next argument is the variables. So t from t of equals not up to t max. t max has to equal 10. So let's see if that works. Encountered non-numerical value for a derivative at t equals 0. So I guess that there's a problem here. Uh, this should be 2. Um, let's have a look at this See what it comes out as. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm just going to cut recording and I'll be right back once I've figured out what the problem is. Okay, I suspect the problem is that uh, when i equals 10, we're putting in 11 here, but really, as we said at the beginning, we want it to wrap around, so it's moving towards the first one. So the last point is moving towards the first point. So the way to do that is to use modular arithmetic. Uh, so instead of i plus 1, we have mod uh, of i plus 1 modulo n. And using an offset of 1 so that it doesn't say 0 ever. Uh, so putting that in here and here, that still did not solve the problem. And... Um, I guess I'll cut recording again and see if I can find any other reason. Hey, okay, it was a silly mistake. Um, I used the variable n in two different places, one for the number of points and one for the norm of uh, each um, difference vector. So I should call this norm instead of n, and put that in here, and running it gives uh, no errors. So now I'm ready to look at um, uh, using the solution. So I need to evaluate, for example, x1 of t, y1 of t, uh, substituting in the solution. 
so that if I do a parametric plot, for example, over t between t and not and t max, I can see the the how the first one moves, how the second one moves, and so on. So uh, I should use this uh, in my visualization. So do with p equals uh, this uh, using i then replace it with this um, oh I need to give a value for t so manipulate t, uh, t between not and t max Okay, so now they all move, and they should, they're all converging to one point down there. So let's see if that is the center of gravity. Uh, what happens if we do mean of the p's? Okay, that's doing what I expected it to do. That would be this, the center of gravity. Uh, center of gravity equals mean of the p's. And let's draw that on as a as a point, a red point, which is a large red point. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, oh, I meant to write center of gravity. Okay. Cool, so they are going to there. Possibly not quite exactly dead on because we are using this approximation to the norm. But uh, it's pretty exact. And we can uh, pick an initial condition which where that approximation doesn't end up mattering so much. Okay, cool. So it might be nice to try a larger number of points. They all kind of go into a band which starts rotating. We can increase the maximum t. Cool. And uh, let's also draw a line from each point to the one it's moving towards. Uh, PT of PP equals mod I plus one N one. Same here. Uh, we can draw the line between P and PP. So you can see which one that's being attracted towards. Cool. Uh, I'll ex uh, work on the visual of it. It might be good to have a bit of opacity. Yeah, that looks good. And right, so I think I have something I can write a little bit about and make a GIF. So. Um, if you've enjoyed this little demonstration of me experimenting, then I'd really appreciate giving a thumbs up on the video and um, subscribing. Okay, so until next time, thank you very much and goodbye.